Oh, I know. I've got my mask. Here we go. Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors regular meeting Tuesday, June 7th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Call to order. Rochester Campus and Bio Google Meet agenda. We have called to order. Adjustments to the agenda. We didn't talk about anything. I don't think we have anything. Okay. No. Um, assign times. <laughs> assign times and timekeepers. Um, so, hey, are you laughing over there? Why well, I, I was I, I was thinking we just kind of roll. I don't know how much we state to them. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I mean, how about this? We get to a, we get to the bigger issues and start your uh, Amy, start your clock, and okay. we get past we get past ten, ten minutes. Just give us a warning. Okay. okay. Yeah, because we do could it, we do end up going for half hour, forty five minutes on something which we should wrap yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and oh, I can certainly help that. Like I think instead of trying to, you know, keep it all, let's um, uh, nail it all down. Let's do what we can. Okay. Uh, sometimes timekeeper. So we're not going to try not to go over 10 minutes, or we're going to know if we're going over 10 minutes. Consent agenda. Um, approve 5 1, approve minutes of Thursday, May 5th, 2022. 5 2, approve minutes of Monday, May 2nd, 2022. Informational. Approve minutes 5 3, 20, sorry, Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022. Annual meeting and 5 4 approve the minutes 20, Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. Special. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the slate of minutes that you just read. Uh, I'll second that. Second that. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. <clears throat> the ayes have it. Uh, do we have any public comment? Nancy, I think you're our only public. Do you have a comment at this time? I do not. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Yes. Uh, board comment. Uh, um, I do. Uh huh. Okay. So the um, Rochester Scholarship Committee met and uh, we sent out 11 um, letters. And we received uh, to, for people to for kids to to fill out an application. Was that uh, seven? We received what? Seven letters. Eleven. Eleven. Sorry. Because yeah. um, one of the scholarships uh, pertains to students in Hancock and Granville, so we were I include them as well for uh -huh. that specific um, scholarship. And we only received two applications. Mm -hmm. um, and so the. Uh, Catherine Kirkpatrick Memorial Scholarship, which is awarded to a Rochester graduating senior who has maintained a strong academic background over a four-year period, is accepted to an accredited program of higher education or a certified trade program, and has demonstrated good citizenship in school and community life, um, um, was awarded to Emma Rogers in the amount of $1,000. Nice. Cool. Uh, the Martin yeah. Farms Appreciation Award uh, which is awarded to Rochester, Hancock, or Granville graduating senior who exemplifies community involvement and responsibility in community project and affairs, marks and needs, and other scholarship activities may also be considered. We went to uh, Levi West, and that was for $100. The Sleeth Memorial Scholarship was presented to two graduating seniors who have been active in school athletics, who has demonstrated an exemplary exemplary work ethic and who has shown a strong sense of character and the recipient have plans going on to work or continuing their education and those were fifty dollars each and we gave one to Levi and one to Emma. Great. So well done. It was very nice. Is Emma Rogers is she a Rochester? Yes. Yeah. I don't yep. know. Good. Um, uh, for the board comment, um, I don't know if the board uh, remembers. Um, uh, anyway, that the staff at Rochester and Stockbridge and the SU office received uh, chocolates from Daily Chocolates of Virgins um, as a booster to get them through the end of the year. And we received a very nice thank you card, I'm sorry I don't have it in front of us, from the SU office. 
saying that it hit their sweet tooth just where they needed to. So, um, just to know we gave a little appreciation. Great. Good. Uh, any other board comment? There being none, celebration of learning. Our favorite part. So we actually have two, <clears throat> because one, a group of students came to me and asked me to do this, which is the first one you're going to oh, see. Oh, And then the other one, um, another teacher had wanted to share out. So it was too hard to pick. <laughs> Excellent. And it's cute. I love um, it. So they'll kind of tell you this, and then you get to hear my commentary of being in the woods as I'm trying to film this while they're showing <laughs> um, This is the K-1, part of the K-1 in Stockbridge, and after going to Pine Hill Park, they read story without any words as part of the hike or the loop that they did in Rutland. So they wanted to make their own, and they've mm -hmm. been learning about frogs in science class. So they made a storybook walk in the woods that's all about frogs. So this is them uh, reading you and walking you through their story in the woods. Oh. All about frogs. All right, who's going to tell me what we're about to see? We're about to see stuff about frogs. Okay, we're going on a little walk through the woods. Uh-oh, Miss Stetson's too tall. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, 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 wait. Some frogs have poison on their skin. All righty. Frogs are amphibians. Good job. Hang on. Hold on, hold on. Wait for me. Some frogs can glide. Some frogs have oils on their and their toes. Good job. And why did you guys make this? Because we were studying about frogs. And why did you put it in the forest? Because we so saw this at Pine Park, and there was stories about what? We thought we could add in the woods. Wow. Right, and then so other people could read it, Haley? Yeah, Ian. And also, so everybody in the school could see it. Everybody in the school could see it. Well, good job. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just did that on their own. They, they asked plenty of other to do it on their own. Yeah. They wanted to do it. They came up with the idea and said. They saw it and wanted to yeah. know why we didn't have one. And oh. so they came one day and asked. And what they said, idea. sure. And then the next day I came back to Stockbridge and say alternate. And they had already made it. So, <laughs> it so I have a feeling I was maybe. Uh, <laughs> there was already a plan in motion. <laughs> well, it's just, uh, it makes me think that maybe we could raise some money to have permanent signposts in both woods. So there was a question about that. Okay, <laughs> great. Because I think it would be could a we, great way you, to celebrate Right, learning. do it and then change it out. Yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. So have they were a... also, the backstory is they're also finishing writing their own uh, story. They had to be either fiction or non-fiction, and they came up with all the pieces and parts. So this was like how they got it into it was, mm -hmm. we already know a non-fiction story and we could write it if we each did our part. And then now they're in the middle, of, well, pretty close to the end of writing their own non-fiction and fiction stories, mm -hmm. um, very elaborate <laughs> and uh, excited to share, so. Very good. They, all on their own, which was pretty cool. Well, I love that initiative. Yeah. Yes. Um, so then uh, this was, like I said, the competition of the littles, right? Uh, the younger kids. Um, so then Lauren, Miss Lauren and Mr. Burley kind of uh, wanted to give a little update on what's been going on this spring. We're having a couple technical difficulties with some of the videos. Um, so I'll have to share those out separately because I'm not the owner of the video. Mm -hmm. But um, so here's a little presentation on what they've been working on so far. Or since the last time, I should say. Fiance in all seasons. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and writing without tears. What a great concept. <laughs> I can see a Hendershot smile here the whole way. Yeah. Their favorite is they got to go on the school bus. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> that was the first part. And then to the sugar house. Yep. Yep. Some of my favorites are local seeds. Easter. Easter egg oh, hunt. Oh my gosh, Carolyn Cookshank in bunny ears. <laughs> I want that picture. That's really good. That's, that's She's good so for both, cute. Yes. Both yeah. Lauren mm. has created some amazing relationships oh, yeah. with our cast. I know. I would to love see. to have that continue. Yes. Older ages, teddy bear painting at the park. So mm -hmm. yes. surprise. I still read aloud, so just so you know. <laughs> that's okay. Well, I don't have to. My lips are moving. <laughs> yeah. You can't see my lips are moving on me. So these were some musical mm -hmm. uh, notes, acts. They're playing some of the different um, different instruments that are up there on her list, and mm -hmm. she's actually used quite a bit of grant money to make sure that the preschool is able to have like their own set and it's appropriately sized. Nice. Oh, nice. oh, cool! Yeah. Great. Singing bowls are really fun. Yes. Okay. Is that right there? In there. Are those the square rods? Yep. Yeah. The one you saw that's the tower with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay! Oh my god. Oh, Congratulations, good job, Burley. Mr. Burley. Yeah. Hmm, that's great. That's a good picture. Stepping up. Right, yeah. Yes. Yep. Excellent, excellent. So those were the two celebrations of learning this one. Excellent, thank you so much, Wendy. You're welcome. Thank you. It really is, I think, everybody's favorite part of this evening. Let us move on to reports of the board, starting with our superintendent. Well, I always have to follow those. I gotta figure out how to do order. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, so you have my report in hand. I mean, we're, you were in the thick of hiring season. Um, really excited for our set for the most part. We're really returning almost everyone, all of our core content teachers. So mm -hmm. that's really exciting. That so good. not doing as, as much hiring on the West Coast. Um, but we do have some hiring going on. Is most this of it's- the West Coast? Now? That's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of it is completed. We have still have a few vacancies mm -hmm. um, that we're, we're still trying to fill. But uh, as far as updates around the legislature, um, I just wanted to give you some, some highlights. Um, the, weights, the waiting um, right. approach was approved and signed by the governor to change ed funding. That's a positive for our tax rate here in RSUD, mm -hmm. um, both around when we look at free and reduced lunch rates, which it takes <coughs> into account. And also, it takes into uh, rural geographical nature across the towns across the state around population within a certain square footage. So um, we qualified there too. So we'll get those final projections from Brad James at the AOE, but it looked to increase our uh, capacity around tax rate. Um, and the idea really is when we think about the work that this task force did, it was to allow smaller districts to try to reinvest that money. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something we're going to want to be talking about as we kick off budget season next fall. Is what does that look like? Um, the, is that waiting take effect? It's gonna it's gonna be phasing in. Yeah. The the other thing um, is special ed funding did get um, moved forward as far as the block grant funding. Mm -hmm. They did postpone the adverse effect um, piece for qualification. For those students yeah, that have a disability, for individual, what's that? What's that? Adverse? I was trying to explain it. Okay. Yeah. 
So it, it's those that would qualify based on based on the disability for an individualized educational plan. And so right now the qualification is that you have to be in the 15th percentile, meaning about 1.5 grade levels behind. That is changing in the sense of it can't be just your 1.5 grade levels behind. The school has to demonstrate what they've done for early intervention to try to fill that gap before you would move to, toward qualification as part of adverse effect. The idea being, let's not wait till kids are one and a half grade levels behind and then say, oh, now we'll qualify them for supports. Yeah. We should be using these funds to support them earlier, right? Okay. You notice the gap. And so the good news out of that law is I think it, it's gonna really make school districts focus on universal instruction, instruction for all, but also what are their other interventions in place mm -hmm. other than just special ed? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I used to say in my trainings is, we shouldn't always think that there's something so special about special ed, right? Like we're all instructors, we're all educators. Mm -hmm. It's not this magic wand that now a student qualifies for an IEP and all of a sudden we're gonna, it's gonna get fixed, right? Like how are we as a team working to best support the student? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's the notion behind this act and when that, that work. This work's been underway for about uh, five years in the state. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's finally taking hold. So mm -hmm. it, I, I'm really excited about it um, because I think it supports our MTSS work. The other thing is Universal School Meals was signed by the governor uh, for next oh, year. I'm oh, sure right. Tara will talk good. a little bit about that with her report. We're still gathering more information on that, um, about how that will work. And, um, Does that go through the summer too? Or is yep, there, we'll have meals yep, throughout the summer yep, through our one plan. Because I noticed this we have. when I read the email, I've been getting the email boost from that organization that's really The VSBA? Yep. I think, yeah, from them. Um, this is a one time deal, and that they've got to make it more permanent, and they haven't quite figured out how they're paying for it. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, is, well, they figured out how to pay for it for a year. Yeah, yeah, for they a year. They use the, some of the Ed Fund surplus. Yep. I worry that I don't know if it's actually going to cover it. When we ran numbers at the Vermont Superintendents Association, we were pricing out about $40 million. They set aside about $22. Mm -hmm. So that's a concern yeah. um, that I have. Um, so it's just around whether or not... It's a great intent. It is. It's yeah. not we quite... Got, we got to figure out how to make it sustainable. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and not have it be an unfunded mandate, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. I think I think we all agree it's important. I just think we need Montpelier to help us figure out how, to, how do we make it sustainable. Well, and the, the Fed, too. I mean, um, and then the other thing, of course, that we're really keeping an eye on is the act that was passed last year around PCB monitoring and testing. I've got schools getting tested this month. Um, and we should find out, some of the, Bethel was one of my first schools, we should find out um, in early fall about how the, how those results turned out. Mm -hmm. um, they did set aside an, about another $22 million um, for remediation of PCBs. We're concerned also that that's certainly not going to be enough yeah. across the state um, to deal with that. And so just stay tuned. Um, it's something I just think that, you know, we're going to need to be paying close attention to as we think about, you know, as I've been meeting with EEI, in Lyle, I'm really thinking about our roadmap around um, deferred maintenance. I really see it as a 10-year plan with three phases to it. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one really being about fresh air, <laughs> HVAC, heating, and then also uh, using the EEI um, audit to give us kind of the, the, lay, the layout of what are our next big items mm -hmm. for a phase Three possibly, I think phase two, part of that's gonna be our PCB situation. It's gonna be about the timing. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking for us to really remediate that by 2026 is the date that was initially in that bill. Um, and, you know, they've kind of, they've moved the needle on what is actually um, allowable as far as PCBs. When you remember when Burlington School District initially um, realized that their PCBs were high, they now no longer would qualify as being seen as high, that, that current building. They would actually be under the threshold currently right now. Um, they've chosen to go ahead and move forward with the, the idea of a, of a new building, right? Although I think they're finding out, I don't know if you read the news, that they can't bond the amount that they actually need 
to build a new tech center in high school. So they have some big decisions ahead of yeah. them as well. Um, so anyways, it, th those are all kind of moving targets. And, um, you know, I, it's, it's kind of like this bittersweet thing of thinking about wrapping up year two um, in the mix of COVID. And, and, you know, last year at this time, th I remember thinking, boy, I think we're out of it. And then realizing how difficult it was. You, I didn't have the foresight to see how difficult it was going to be this winter. And, you know, one of the things I think that I've not um, probably discussed as much as I probably should have with the boards is just how tough it's been. And that we really haven't recovered yet. Um, staffing, um, you know, just as far as staff contracting COVID this year and or being out due to relatives having had COVID. I would actually say this year was more trying in regards to absenteeism, both for staff and students. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, one of the things that I'll be monitoring and, and thinking about is what does it look like again next fall and winter? right um when i expect some type of wave to come through so i mentioned that just to say to the boards know that i'm thinking that way and that we'll be strategically thinking that way and then finally the last thing i'll add is i'm really excited we've got some temp health coming on board to do some custodial work across the su Yay. um and so i'm feeling really optimistic about optimistic about that and we do have someone who's um, showing some interest in possibly doing the maintenance and facility full-time position that we listed here way back in the fall. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, stay tuned on those things. Those are, those are positive things. But we definitely have been able to secure at least one temp worker this summer for our SUD. Um, and we're hoping maybe even at the second. So. And I'll take any questions folks have. Um, I'm not sure if this is principal or you, but it has to do with maintenance. What's the story with our tractor? Is it just sitting there right now? No, I would be principal. Um, yeah. okay, it's I can been read. used, some, like rec, U Sports used it. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah. okay. So it's running. That's it the, is. Okay, okay, good. Someone had a little bit more of a mechanical ingenuity yeah. to be able to figure it out. Good, yeah. good. So it's, it's actually being used because it is an asset we have. Yeah. And it's nice to know that it's being used. Good. Uh, principals. Uh, sorry, any other questions for our superintendent? Nope. Principal's report. Um, academic. Yeah, so we'll start with the Data. actual report and then we'll, because uh, it's pretty, seems like we've done a lot since we last met, but mm -hmm. I would also say on the flip side of that, that uh, absenteeism has been a huge issue among staff. Mm -hmm. Probably the last two months, really, uh, basically since we came back from spring break. Um, that's when COVID was here. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it, yeah. all know. <laughs> right, I was going to say, <laughs> table knows well. Uh, so, but we were able to make it work, and that looked creative some days, but never uh, understaffed, thankfully, but very creative. Um, so we definitely were fortunate in that regards. But, um, so a lot did go on. Um, I think probably the highlights, my personal favorites, maybe. Was on Friday we finally got kids from both campuses together for field day, and they had a great time. May I just put in two? Yeah, I, go for I, it. I, I you watched. I came. I was part of it. I would encourage all of you to come see our school. It was really that's what I kept thinking. It's just mm -hmm. to see our school all in one place, all the kids, all the almost all the faculty. It's a very encouraging, heartening thing to see. And I just, if you can make time next year to see it, I would highly recommend it. Absolutely. It was, it was great to see, to echo. And it jump-started some conversations about next year. Yep. And um, there is a group that's currently planning how to figure out how to do four, five, six book club across both mm -hmm. campuses mm -hmm. together so the kids could pick. And they started some of that work today, both groups, um, by looking at some of the Golden Globe excuse me, Golden Dome, not Golden Globe, mm -hmm. wrong, wrong venue completely here, uh, mm -hmm. Golden, Golden Dome books for next year, which used to be the DCF books, for those of you who might be more familiar with that, and they were watching book trailers and picking which ones they would like to be <laughs> a part of. So that was a huge um, piece of what they've been doing the past couple of days. 
and they were excited, I think, about the prospects of doing it together. So mm -hmm. um, that was exciting. And then I do have to just say a huge shout out to Heather Hendershot, who's been subbing yeah, in the library. Is. It looks and, amazing. And she has cleaned out from it's... head to toe every single book in this library and put her hands on it and checked it in and asked the kids what they want for books mm -hmm. and has just been a fabulous um, well, substitute she's, for she's us. She's also been a substitute of the pre-K. Yes. And the Lauren spoke very highly of her. Yes, she's been a great yeah. addition. And so possibly might, well, I don't want to spill any beans, but is there a chance that she would be here regularly? Uh, yeah, potentially. Uh -huh. There's a couple of things, Serena. Great. So we'll see. I, I, I just heard from very conversation yep. about it, so thank you. Yeah. So there's that, and then the last thing, I can't believe I didn't add it, but it shows that it's just weeks away, or a week and a half away. Um, sixth grade graduation for Rochester, I yep. didn't put it in here, and sorry about that, is Tuesday the 14th at 5.30, out back. And then, I just really want to make sure I got that date right. Can you say out back? Like oh, yeah. okay. Back there. Yep, Tuesday the 14th at 5.30. And then, then is, every, is it open to the general public? or I mean, it it's open to families and board. I'm not sure we've, like, advertised it. Because that's well, I know last year there was a, only yeah, a there's no number limit. that could come. No limit this year. There's there's no there's 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 limit, there. no grid, no okay. all those crazy things. <laughs> like, right, Amy, I kind of blocked that out. I think in my brain. No more um, So that's at 530. And then Stockbridge sixth grade graduation is at. 6.30 on the 15th. Okay. So you're more than welcome Shoot. to attend okay. either or both. Love to have you. And when is the last day of school? 17th. No. 16th. 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 17th is a teacher work day. Oh. I mean, so you can bring your child, but they might get put to work. <laughs> what were the times on 14th and 15th? 5.30. 5.30. It's 5.30 for both. It's 5.30 for both? Yes. Okay. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I apologize. Oh, no. I don't have the date calendar in front of me. Um, so that, I feel like that was a big thing that I didn't include that I wanted you guys to know. But then, um, unless you have questions about that piece, then we can jump to the academic uh, report. Okay. So um, this is basically our STAR 360 data from the spring, but it kind of tracks it throughout the course of the whole school year. Just kind of a reminder of our three um, goals and indicators for progress monitoring. And so... Now, what you're going to see on these next couple of slides is um, we're going to start with literacy, but it tracks from the fall all the way to the spring. Um, so the yellow is fall data, uh, blue is winter, and spring is green. And I just would say uh, when we start to look at that <clears throat> kind of grade by grade, we see our sixth graders kind of right at the same point. Um, what I would say as they were when they started the year or the percentage of them that are um, meeting expectations, what I would say in that when you look at the individual breakdown, their scaled score growth individually, how much they grew over the course of the year, while it doesn't look like that many more are meeting expectations, they grew tremendously. Right, because the expectations grow. Right, and they're still meeting or exceeding yeah. it in that way. So that was great to see. Uh, in previous years, I was kind of trying to refresh my memory a little bit. We tend to see this spring like drop off, like they didn't make enough uh, or they didn't grow enough. So it was great to see, especially with sixth graders, because this time of year is a little yeah, close to senioritis. <laughs> uh, I won't quite call it that, but pretty close. Um, so it was great to see that they either maintain our percentages maintained or increased slightly. Um, and the, the other big celebration is how much third grade, like that percentage 
uh, of third graders that are meeting expectations now, it jumped tremendously from the winter. So it's always interesting and telling when kids make that turn, when our curriculum kind of makes that turn to really push them mm -hmm. to increase in skills. Um, and one credit I really want to give is something we piloted in Stockbridge and we're going to start to use next year is uh, a, it's a self-assessment tool, but it's also a teacher-driven tool that when you're planning your reading groups, you take not only what you learn from the benchmark assessments, but also from our universal screen, our STAR 360, for next year it'll be track my progress, and you take those focus skills like vocabulary, which is an area of weakness for a lot of our students, and you learn and plan for specifically how to build it in not only to their reading group, but we built it into the read aloud. So when students are responding to reading, they have very specific vocabulary words that they were asked, what do you think this means? What told you that? And then they had a lot of their discussions around that. That's just one example. But it was definitely a powerful one that showed a lot of growth for some students when we um, utilized that. And that's, it's a tool that kind of came out of our data training group and something that a teacher created trying to figure out how to better use the data and plan ahead for. So now we'll work to um, roll that out all together next year. Mm -hmm. But it was pretty powerful. So lots of celebrations there. Um, and then if, this is a new slide that was added and it's a great one. This is the number of students who were scoring like a level one or well below expectations by grade level. And this is also a really great celebration. Um, you know, if you look at third mm -hmm. grade in the fall, there are 10 students who were well below and now there's six. So that means four kids have made some serious gains. What I'll also say about this group again is while they may not, they're well below expectations, the tremendous, there's large growth. It's not like we're just seeing one or two scaled points or scaled score points. We're seeing hundreds of points of an increase for some of these kiddos, which is great. It means we're in the right direction. So a lot of work to do. But, um, well, that's one of our goals, right? Is exactly. to really reduce this yep. Even uh, more. population of a level one. And it looks like by that, it's that you're doing it's really starting to It is. It's cool happen. to see it that way. You don't always kind of, when you're in the thick of it, you don't always see it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's good to remember. Yeah, that's a good slide. It yeah. helps tell that story. That's an important one because that's mm -hmm. part of our goals. Um, Absolutely. Also, gets us trained to look for short is good. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> 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 we're oriented their eyes differently, even though Lydia doesn't yeah, 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 say yeah. anything. It's good training right. for us to look at <laughs> it. Is a good point. What's um, Reading, and we haven't got to math yet, but reading really seems to excel uh, this year in right. uh, progress by grade and um, and also by the uh, reduction in the population of the level one students. What's, uh, how come, how, what's, what's the, what are you doing here that you think that made the difference? I, I, I don't know how the other districts are doing, but just talking about Rochester Stockbridge, what, what are the key ingredients that you think made a difference this year? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that every single teacher is utilizing a full literacy block, like we're not cutting corners, we're not trying to find ways to make that 90 minutes shorter. We really know what we need to do instructionally, meaning, okay, I have a mini lesson and it's about 10 to 15 minutes. Then while my students are working independently, I'm meeting with these reading groups and I've taught the interactive read aloud and kids are responding. And the, so we've really bought into and are all using uh, with great fidelity, the structure of the reading, the literacy block as a whole. Mm -hmm. I'd say the next piece that we need to work on is some phonics and decoding. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely um, an and, area. And how are you going to get there? Is that is that a program or is that a, just an emphasis? How do you, what's, uh, what's the trick there? A little bit of both <laughs> is the honest answer. I think everybody mm -hmm. gave the current program a shot with phonics and word study and it just isn't supporting what our students need. It's not. Um, when you say current program, do you mean font and Pinot? Right. Uh -huh. Their phonics and word study component isn't uh, 
for some kids it works, right? But when you struggle, struggle to be able to decode or break down a word, those strategies aren't consistent enough mm -hmm. for kids who need that extra support. So do you have uh, a, a new program that you're going to be using or substituting uh, for next year to help? Mm -hmm. We have a couple that? in mind and we haven't quite finished yet. So, uh -huh. <laughs> it's coming. It's some folks are using some DI strategies around decoding, and um, some are looking at foundations. Mm -hmm. so. um, I would just add, this is sort of what you'd expect. Right. I mean, Mapping when, when solid we, yeah, basically years, from Pontus three, three years ago, right. yep, um, it became a big push. Right. And when um, um, Janie, mm -hmm. Janie left the board, to be doing direct instruction. Mm -hmm. That was, I sort of see that in that period, in the six months when she was still on the board, that was the beginning of the whole push. Right. And now we're three years on from that. This is just what you're hoping to see. No, we should, yeah, and hopefully right. we continue to see the trajectory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's the big difference, right? Right. Math, we're just in year one. Yep, yeah, exactly. Our literacy, exactly. we're in year three. Yep, yep. And uh, great. And another question, this is just uh, on this definitions, but yeah. One chart uses the word meeting slash exceeding expectations, and mm -hmm. another graph says state benchmarks. So are they the same? Is our expectations the same thing as state benchmarks? Are they two different things? I'm trying to interpret this, and yeah. I. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, I think um, you know the the state benchmarks can. Um, when we are looking at proficiency, they are talking about it being exceeding or uh, sorry, meeting or exceeding expectations. Yep. The the scale score, as we talked about, is sort of a consistent um, measure that works from whenever kids start taking the assessment through whenever it's done, mm -hmm. and so they set those um, those benchmarks depending on sort of when you've taken the assessment. So if we had taken this assessment in April rather than May, that benchmark would be in a slightly different. Place. But I would say, right, like in your interpretation of it, yeah. they're generally the same thing. Okay. Um, but they, it, it just sort of indicates that we're look, talking about sort of a different way of measuring it in terms of you know, hitting proficiency. So they're roughly the same. And are, is expectations or benchmarks roughly 50% or better? Is that, the, or, or what is the? Yeah, we have set it at, at 60. At 60? Yeah. And that's a di that's the difference between setting uh, generally a national benchmark versus a state benchmark. State so, and regional is more aligned with sixty, and a national would be I think closer to four, between forty and fifty. It was, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Your, our target is sixty here. Yeah. 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 Our target's higher on the. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Thank you. And this is not the one that we're going to be measuring because it's you've got the state. Summative. Uh, summative that's going to come in. And, we're going to see it in, I think, in August or something. But these are indicators of how we're doing, it mm -hmm. seems to me, that a word's strong, we'd hopefully it will continue. If it's weaker, maybe we can bounce. But yeah. is that I, how we interpret this? Yeah, I think the, the, there's two sort of two caveats. That one, one on technical um, will be that although we have planned to share the six state summative SBAC results in August, um, I will say that uh, the state has made no guarantee that they will have the results ready by then. Uh, I will also, yeah, so I think we maybe looked at them a little bit early this past year, maybe yeah. before they were fully released. Um, so we will just, you know, we will try to follow guidance yeah. to figure out what it is, but we our plan is to start August. In terms of, no, 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 I've lost the second part of it. Oh, the, uh, the I think that we, we do choose these assessments because we hope they are predictive of performance on the state summative. I think the biggest difference is the writing component. Mm -hmm. Um, and the writing component doesn't really exist oh. in the STAR 360 yeah, or sure. any of the, the yeah. sort of the seasonal benchmarks that we use, and it is a large component of the state summative. And so I, um, you know, I wow. think there are ways in which we can look at results and see some of the differences that might be attributed to writing. Um, and I think, I think part of you know uh, Lindy's report, she was talking about sort of their goals around writing. I don't remember if it was in your in this report or in your principal's report, but just how they're thinking about more focus on writing, particularly in the upper elementary grades. We've heard about that before, too. It's, it's complicated. Mm. It's never the same thing twice, right? Well, you've got to feel awfully good about these results. I do. There's some great and celebrations. Um, yeah. For the whole... Yeah, it's yeah. all happening here in these two buildings. Um, thank you.
through the scale score one? Through the quick, yeah. yeah, so we'll go through scale score. Um, so we are, our scale score, we're a little bit below the state average, um, but we have grown fall to spring 1.7 times the state yeah. expectation, which is huge because uh, typically they say like 1.0. So we're, we're increasing at the right rate to close some gaps, which is good. We've got to keep the kids headed in the right direction. Um, and again, some of their scale scores were higher than they've ever been. Um, there are several students among both buildings who for the first time are in their career were able to celebrate the fact that they had met or exceeded the standard. Um, so that was huge. I don't think they thought it was as big of a deal as we did, but I think they're like, oh, it's not red. And I'm like, right, that's a good thing. Um, so it was very exciting to see, especially we're seeing this huge turn that happens in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade where some gaps are really closing, which is not common, right? They say if you don't make it, you know, there's a lot of stats that are scary if you're not reading by the time you're a third grader. So the fact that we're seeing fourth, fifth, and sixth graders closing gaps is wow. really a huge celebration. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to articulate that and without rambling in my <laughs> report. Um, so our fourth graders are right about on or exceeding um, the state benchmark in our skilled score. And again, a group that's really grown <laughs> tremendously. Um, and that growth rate is just a huge celebration. And our fifth graders, kind of just going through this, but our fifth graders here, um, a little bit of a dip, but not anything abnormal, I would say. Um, they still are increasing, and we're making progress. There, there's one piece to fifth grade maybe that's worth noting is these these are the students that um, take the most assessments in the in the yes. spring because of the they state summative they take the math and the ELA just like their third and fourth and sixth grade uh, yeah, colleagues but they also take the science and uh, I don't think we're seeing it as much here as perhaps in some, some other places but I will I will say that I think we saw some assessment fatigue in just the amount we are asking kids to continually show us what they know in a particular way. Mm -hmm. It's great when they do it out in story walks also. <laughs> right. Because uh, that, you know, they can see how they get energy from that. I don't know if they get as much energy when they're showing their learning in this way. And so I, I think fifth grade in particular, is just it's worth noting how much, that just, it's an additional full assessment that they're taking that no right. one else they is taking. they essentially took six well, state it, tests. So and then they say, took these two, star three sixty. I heard I heard from a couple parents who said their kids don't like taking tests, and I mean that's that's part of this too is that you know there is you know this exists that some people don't learn don't process tests don't you know it's just not their thing, right. and um, um, that's you know that may and of course but that's the sta that's the standard that's what everybody's got to do, right so, absolutely and it's it's. Not the same, but I will use an analogy. Like we use tests a lot of other places in life, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to take a test to get your permit, and you have to take a test. To, to I'm get not other saying I'm not. I'm, right. I'm saying how are we creative? You know, can we get some of these results without? Yeah, I mean, I think that's where number number three falls in on our SU roadmap. Mm -hmm. Is this idea that by 2025, all students in the final grade will complete a self-selected capstone? And mm -hmm. I really want that to be like align to our curriculum and that students can talk about what proficiencies they're meeting yep. and that that's a real showcase of learning right like mm -hmm. a celebration of learning where we're inviting community in and students can you know when we think about one of the reasons why smarter balance is a writing assessment essentially right is it's such a critical skill right to be able to articulate one's thoughts in writing is really an mm -hmm. important lifelong skill yeah. um, and so I think that when we think about the capstone projects, students having the ability to both orally and in writing, writing, be able to demonstrate what they learn through a passion project, something that they're passionate about, I do think that that helps complete our comprehensive assessment system, right? Like we got state standardized tests, we got a local authentic assessment that's tied to our curriculum, and we have these benchmark assessments. So it gives us a well-rounded picture, not just 
one one area, right. essentially a senior project. Yeah. Yeah. The idea would be that we'd have senior projects at the end of every grade level per building, right? So here in Stockbridge would be sixth grade, but part of that's like, how do you build those skills up throughout the elementary career yeah. so that you're ready to demonstrate that in that type of authentic way? Yeah. Um, and so you know we've given ourselves some lead time to make certain that we are building that. And it'll get better as we go, but the idea is that old schools will launch and For instance, like bringing it up to them at the end of fifth grade, like, or is it something? Well, I, but it's like but doing I mean, mini passion well, projects in third grade, right? To yeah. get comfortable, yeah, like, got you. Okay. Okay. oral speaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. presentation. Yeah, and yeah. then that you'd like, those kindergartners, that was an example of like some skills right there that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. you would start to lead up to getting to a place where- I think especially when could, some people have anxieties talking and speaking and presenting in front of people mm -hmm. to be able to do it but with something that you're passionate about I think it will be easier for them yeah yeah and I don't mean this as a you know a damning of testing at all no. I'm just saying no, 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 yeah I hear you know my son happen, my son happens to love taking tests that's just something oh, he loves not. okay I'm yeah right. and and there you go it's just he just finds it an interesting challenge yeah. and then I heard from this other parent about how their son smart boy, active boy, all this kind of thing, he struggles with it. And I just, I, I want, you know, as much as we love these numbers, and we spend a lot of time on them, I just I just hope that people are being creative. You know, no, I, I think people are, right? I think it's just one way <clears throat> uh -huh. we present. But it's an important way, too, right? Like, it, And what I was trying oh, to yeah. say is testing is a life skill, so we yes. have to be able to support kids around that as well and figure out what are strategies that work for them too. It's not just about content, but it is about, I, I'm not a great test taker, I mm -hmm. have to admit it. Um, but it's about teaching some strategies around that mm -hmm. as well. Like I, was, I was glad to hear the Star 360, um, you could do a, uh, you could go back and do a, a, a follow-up. Um, he didn't finish, Walter didn't finish. You mean ask back? S back, okay, yes, yes. S back. He went. He got a chance to go back and yep. redo. You do have to. Which yeah. I thought was a really good thing out of the moment. Yeah. Good. Like, Sorry. I should Start slow you down too now. much. No, you're good. Um, so again, we're seeing our reading increase. So sixth graders made some gains. Probably not quite as much as the other groups, but all things considered, again in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, um, so then we'll go to math. Um, so as you can see, these are the percentage of students that are meeting or exceeding expectations um, in math. And again, it works this way from fall to winter to spring. Um, so we're seeing some places of, uh, we're increasing and showing some set, steady growth. I also, um, this will be a focal point in our professional development this summer. We already have two dates lined up. Um, so in addition to this assessment, teachers are completing currently something called the Common Growth Assessment uh, with students in mathematics, and that's kindergarten, actually, all the way through fifth grade. And they're take, they will bring that data to our professional development on June 22nd with Bonnie and we will, Bonnie Bourne, and we'll be working ourselves, Rochester and Stockbridge, as well as Newton School, which is great, so we're going to have some more. Uh, teacher collaboration to work with where we're really going to dive in not only to that data but now we've had a year with all these brand new materials and these this brand new program to really talk about there's some implementation and data collection points that we're going to be doing with Fidelity and that's the expectation and how do you implement something like Number Corner with Fidelity it's not just calendar it's a little bit more than calendar Fidelity so, is the program that you use? No, the program's called Bridges Bridges, yes, that's correct Sorry, implementing with Fidelity, we're going to use all the aspects the way they're supposed to be used. This year, we definitely implemented more than others, and it was a learning year and figuring out how to do this multi-age because these program this program is singular. So that'll be a focal point around some investigations, which that's a part of Bridges where it's like. Um, you probably all did like the word problems where you had to show all your steps out. Mm -hmm. That's the best comparison. And that's also a good um, comparison to the Smarter Balance Assessment because there's a piece that's called a performance desk that kids have to do with math. So it's a great opportunity for them to show what they know and why they're thinking what they know. 
So we're going to dive into that. Um, you know, again, we saw some good growth, but not where we want to be by any means, but progress compared to a year ago. And going up. And going up, yep. I'll also just jump in. I, I I don't. I saw it wasn't in Libby's report. Libby had uh, teachers from two other, or I think two other schools, yeah. come visit her yes. campuses um, to see implementation of Bridges Math um, and see how it's able to be conducted in a multi-use classroom, mm -hmm. which I think is a real celebration to our teachers. One that they took the rest right to open their doors and allow guest teachers from other districts to come and observe outside of the SU. Right. Um, and I think it. You know, it speaks to bodies working with these schools as well, that Bonnie felt like that there were some really great things happening in those classrooms mm -hmm. to invite those teachers in. So um, I just share that as like a kudos to those teachers because, you know, I think when we start to be schools that other schools want to come see, that's when I, I think that's a really good qualitative measure. Are, are we doing good work? What's the explanation of the different results overall with math and reading? Say that, that explanation. Reading was, um, you look at growth, uh, every grade was over one. Mm -hmm. um, some more than that, um, a number of them were above state expectations. Math are really, really struggling and we're not seeing that percentage growth. Uh, and percentage growth, I like that, that chart yeah. because even if you start low right. and you're not at the state expectation, but you starting low, if it shows that you can accelerate more, yeah. you're, you're gaining more than the number one, which is going to the next grade. So what's happening here? Um, is math just nuts and bolts more difficult? Is, it, it, is, is the Bridges program hard to understand it, but once we understand it, it's gonna, we're gonna right. zoom. Is it that bridges, you have some questions on whether or not we should, um, it sounds like the teachers are with it, it sounds like the administration is with it, it sounds like the effort is there. So I'm trying to get a sense, I'm not expecting math to equal on the, right. the, the where, where reading is, but I'm looking at growth and it's, there's, I don't think there's a grade hardly no. that the growth reached right. one, which means we're falling. So I help actually, us here. Yeah, so the, the honest answer is that's how far behind we were to start. Like that's where we were prior to implement. Prior to this year, we did not have consistent programming structure of the math block. We weren't investing enough time in mathematics. Now we're at 75 minutes of math class. There's more structure around our instruction in general. I mean, teachers, were just pulling, like it just was not, what we had invested in literacy, we haven't even scraped the surface of mm -hmm. math. And so that's how we're starting to make that switch. So then when you jump into a new program and kids are already behind to start the yeah. off, we're right trying yeah. to close a lot of gaps in a lot of different ways quickly. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing great individual progress, but we're just, still playing catch up and so one of the conversations that's going to happen on the 22nd is that we're not backing up and what I mean by that is third grade is not going to start their content with the middle of the, like the middle of the year second grade. We're going to start with third grade content and then we're going to build some extra times in for more to build up those other skills that they may not have gotten in second grade instruction. So I hear you say it we were in a hole. It just takes extra effort to get out of the hole just to get on the surface. And then you've got to take off. It's and a big um, mindset switch for teachers to understand that you like don't back all the way up. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, not kind of, that's a practice that's been happening for a while. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, we didn't get through all the material in math. We got to, because it's how we all learned math. Like yes. You have to learn this next step to be able to go on to step B. And so they, so it's this big mindset shift and focus that we have to really hone in on and build. Yeah, and just to add to that, I think one of the things that is an adjustment for a lot of educators is the idea that 
Um, not every topic that is introduced needs to be, um, you don't need to become proficient on it the first time you hit it, right? So teachers can, some, right, like that, the way the Bridges curriculum and others, but the Bridges in particular, is structured is a spiral, right? So you hit, you hit a topic and then you come back to it. And for some, that, that is hard. Like, I, I want to get all my kids just doing this rather than if you had, and especially if it's the first year, you actually don't see that spiral. You haven't experienced it yet. Mm -hmm. So it can, it can spiral within a year, but also spirals over, over a year. So what, like what, what Lindy's saying they need to do is exactly what they need to do so that they're not, right, we're not, we're not sitting in this small spiral. Like, you've got you've to get through it and come back to it. Um, and so I think it's just, they're, we're going to see a lot of, um, of teachers realizing, oh, they, right, like they have another shot at this. They actually have two or three more shots at it. It gets deeper each time, so it's also not, it's not redundant for kids who did get it, but it does come back to it. So I think that's one piece. The other piece, and I won't, like, we won't emphasize this too much, is if you can picture maybe your, like, what you know about sort of your own experiences, like, I don't think that math happens in, in our homes as much as mm -hmm. literacy does. So mm -hmm. if you think of sort of all the disruptions that we've had just from an individual kid level, if they're heading home and quarantining for a week, like they may like stay up on the reading as much. It's just the math. Like I think when the more you, like I think the more that we missed school, whether that was individuals or a teacher reading out, like you just, you're not gonna make as much progress mm -hmm. as sort of, um, right, as some of the reading things. And because reading has been more in place, you know, here, solidly for a couple of years, it just can move more. Yes. Whereas everything was new this year, and we had a really disrupted year, like there's just a lot of pieces that, that did it. So I, I mean, I just, I love the way that was captured. Last question, I'm starting to dominate, but this, will, uh, this is what we're all about. Um, looking forward to the next fiscal school year. Um, your teacher team is a board on bridges and believes in it and learned in it and, and are still yeah. seeing this as a viable strategy to get their students where they need to move forward. And secondly, is has there been a lot of, is there, do we have a, pretty much the same teacher team for next year, or is there yes. a big, big turnover that's going to affect this? There's no turnover. No turnover. It's it. incredible. Wow, so that's, that puts us in a... Okay. Yeah, it puts us at, uh, and going. it's like trusting, the, like, like on the set, it spirals and it builds on it, each other, and it's um, try to remember when I was a teacher to trust the pacing of a curriculum guide yeah. is a very hard trust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, oh, but I don't feel like my kids are ready for this, and the bridge is pacing, boom, 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 for good reason, and so that's the piece that we really have to. Okay. Do you think thing. by continuing on rather than like, oh, we gotta stop, we gotta go backwards, mm -hmm. that if with them increasing their level of learning moving forward, that it may actually make it easier? Yes, right, like they're gonna come with more. So yeah. one point of like pride is the age groups that have followed the curriculum a little closer to the pacing and made it through the most are our youngest primary grades. And they really figured out how to do that. So they're building a foundational level that some of our other kiddos did mm -hmm. not get mm -hmm. prior to. So. It should be, you're right, Pat. Yeah. It should be each year is a little bit. Kiddos are coming to the table remembering yeah. more and yeah. knowing more. Okay. And our pre kindergarten teachers, our preschool teachers are also using bridges. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, that we, you know, we've got some incoming kindergartners for this will not be all brand new to them. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, still really play based, and there's features. nice use of manipulatives, but it yeah. is a nice, it is a nice piece that. Yeah. We're playing the long game here. We are, yeah. Right? Yeah, but seriously. we also yeah. can't. No. The long game is important, but the immediate well, but game is important but I also too, think right? Like you can't just. And I only is, say that because I don't want you know. There's no, no, kids no, but making it's, parent, it's important <laughs> for yeah. school boards to be patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get a good staff, get a good program, to trust you, you're doing the work, and then we we're doing it forward. I do think we need to wrap this up. Yeah, sorry. I know this is, no, it's not. You're in, it's done a lot of questions, but I just want to keep us. So that kind of sums up all the growth rates. <laughs> in your question, Bill. Yeah. It was a good question because it's a good comparison. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Eight three business manager. Good evening, Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report, which outlines the due dates the month of June for the business office. Jamie did touch on 
S100. We're still waiting for some guidance from the child nutrition program on exactly what our process needs to be for that. We are still going to collect free and reduced applications for the next school year. And the agency of education and child nutrition team are working on a different type of income verification form for in the future. Uh, but right now our guidance is um, we need to complete our applications as we always have and that the funding mechanisms will be similar to what we've done currently, which is we're still submitting our claims on a monthly basis to get reimbursed. So that's what I know at this point, and we continue to get updates weekly on Wednesdays when the child nutrition team does their weekly calls with um, business managers and school food, authorities, school food authorities. And then the rest of my report is later on in your agenda, which is your fiscal year 23 tax anticipation note. So if there's any questions. Questions for a business manager? I had a comment. What's that? Uh, there's a great editorial at the uh, Herald um, last week. I was wondering whether Jamie wrote it or something, but it was a phenomenal um, kudos <laughs> nice. to you and to your boss, um, our school superintendent, and, and how you turned around our financial system in the schools. And what struck me was when people didn't believe our numbers. It's awfully hard to communicate what we're doing. I can understand, here's the numbers, no, I, they're too low, they're too high, but to not trust the data just leads to enormous voids and, and uh, disruption and, um, and anger. And it seems to me that you have, and Ethan, you said it more times than and every time it's worth it, is that you've turned those things around with your team. Mm -hmm. and Jamie, credit to you. Um, and, and that's just fantastic. That's a building block that has so many benefits mm -hmm. for everybody in the organization that uh, I think it was well written. And I just wanted to commend you for the board for, for your work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions for a business manager? Again, again, thank you very much, Tara. WRVSU policy committee updates. Well, Patrick's on that. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, Patrick was really the, um, <laughs> So we're working on two policies. One is a residency verification for um, tuition uh, paying students. Um, that will be the full board um, will get to weigh in on that this month. I think we're going to probably get it adopted hopefully in August at the full board level and then local boards in um, September. Um, the, what, it re, what it results in is the same residency, annual residency verification, but it really spells out in policy what we do if there's a residency within question. Mm -hmm. And it gives us a corresponding affidavit that we can request that a family fill out. It gives us a lot of detailed information that we can mm -hmm. use. To verify residency. Um, as I was working with Granville and Hancock, Tara and I, on this policy, it, it quickly became clear to me, like, we have, like, example, like Rochester, right, was not a choice district in the past, and Chelsea was not a choice district, like, just to tighten up some things around policy around that. So I'm excited about that policy. It's been vetted by our attorney and was adopted by Granville Hancock already. Um, which is not usually how we do policy, of course. It typically comes out of the SU, but um, it was a policy that I felt like we really needed to get on the books there quickly because they were, uh, they are completely tuition um, school choice town, right? And we had some concerns that we wanted to address via policy. Um, the other one's a social media policy specifically for school personnel to give some guidance around the use of social media, both professionally um, in um, as a private citizen. Um, mostly the private citizen part is just reminding folks of things around what proper etiquette would be. It's a policy that is certainly going to be useful in regards to just supporting our employees via a staff handbook around, you know, just proper etiquette of the use of social media that's been lacking mm -hmm. that I wish we've had. Um, it was a policy that had been drafted and then COVID hit and it, it kind of got put by the wayside, but we pulled it back out 
couple months ago, and I feel like we have a really solid draft that's been vetted by legal as well. And then finally, a third policy that the SU Policy Committee plans to take up is I had a student group at the White River Valley Middle School um, actually get granted board permission to fly the pride flag during um, June mm. that we decided that we were not going to do because we didn't have a flag policy in place. And if you had fall, if you follow, have followed our neighbor supervisory union in the Herald, you'll see that that has played out not in a positive way in that mm. particular district. And um, so we've taken a flag policy from Hardwood and done some revisions from, um, around that um, and had an attorney um, in Dina's firm actually work with me on that. I feel like it's a really solid draft. Um, and so that policy is going to be reviewed by the um, policy committee for the first reading in June with the hopes of possibly looking for adoption in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, and what I like about it is it really talks about the idea of school affiliated groups making proposals that align to the school's values and mission and vision. Mm -hmm. And then that would come in from the school board uh, as a recommendation from administration for consideration and um, would protect us um, in regards to uh, freedom of speech and making certain that folks couldn't reflect the flying of flags that might not align um, to our mission and vision as, mm -hmm. a, as a school district. So that policy is um, in draft form as well. So that's what the group's been working on. Patrick, it's the, it's the, it's, I'll make certain that you're getting those reminders. I have a okay. feeling that Christy might be still sending them to Ethan. No, he, oh, he, did you he get knew it? he was I just, I was just sick. Yeah, I just, oh, like, God, you know, last meeting, okay. he told me he couldn't Perfect. make it. Okay. And I, I no said, worries, absolutely but. don't be others. It's a long-term commitment. Very good. Uh, WRVSU full board updates. And I asked for this to be there, and now I can't actually, this is the problem with my brain, is it doesn't, if you remind me of something, then I'll be able to talk well, about it. Well, we've been doing some it. trainings. Yes. And we got reorg this coming month. That's right. Yep. Uh, in June. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about in June as well is a board retreat mm -hmm. to do some um, goal setting, mission divisioning, work, board procedures and protocols at the full board level, mm -hmm. um, hopefully this summer. And then the other thing that's um, still out there is we got to solidify the alternative board calendar. Um, and so yes. I want to talk That's about that in one. June again at the full board and then look to put it in front of a, a local district boards at a wagon wheel early in August to amend our meeting dates and times. But we got to really figure out what does that look like. Um, the biggest conflict actually was us, our yes. son and Granville Hancock. Yep. And it might mean moving it from the first week to a second week. Yeah. Or and possibly on Monday or a Wednesday. Yep. Those are open, so I think we just gotta figure that out. Okay. Um, good. Uh, may I say the other part of it has been uh, uh, with the committee. Oh the yeah, yeah, yeah. Committee yeah. Has no, that's been, fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, looking over uh, a compensation and employment package for our superintendent, and that we've uh, had some good discussions with Jamie and around about about that, and we're um, about to. Uh, present him with a significant increase um, as we negotiated um, and I think um, we feel very good about it. I feel very good about it um, for the work we're doing and the things we're talking about in the SU office we're talking about. This is this is uh, money spent. That said, there was some concern, and I'll, I'll say this openly, about the percentage with uh, teachers, you know, increases and superintendent, that we keep that in mind how things are going up proportionally. Um, and so just that that's, that's out there. But we should see that at the SU level. I believe we're bringing it to the next full board meeting. I think it's going to be one of the special yeah. tomorrow night. Yeah, that's right, that's right, it's tomorrow night. That's mm -hmm. right, if you want to do that. Sorry, I, the meetings don't stay in my head very well. I don't my calendar, though. Um, so we will be, uh, uh, we'll be discussing that or voting on that tomorrow. Good. Uh, moving on. Discussions items. EEI update on Rochester Stockbridge. Elementary heating, HVAC, etc. Possible action. Hey, Eric. Hello. Hi, everyone. Eric Lafayette with Energy Efficient Investments. Hi there. Happy to have you guys back. 
um, meeting with you guys again today. I know I just met with you, at least with the Rochester board recently. So um, you can go to the next slide. So I, I know I talked about this last week, but I just, or last month, but I just wanted to touch base on it again. So about us, we're similar to general contractors, but we really focus on energy and operational savings. And then we assist school boards, school districts, supervisory unions, um, and financing options, finding grant and rebates available, um, and helping with the bonding if that's ultimately the way that the, the board chooses to go. Um, we self-perform a lot of the engineering work. So we have in-house mechanical engineers and electrical engineers. And then ultimately we come, with, uh, come up with energy saving measures with guaranteed savings. Um, and then we use a measurement and verification program to ensure those savings over a period of time. So at this point, we've gone through, we've gone through Stockbridge in Rochester. Um, there was a focus, you know, in the last month to really look at the HVAC, um, specifically at Rochester, their heating system in a boiler. Um, I think last time that we met, um, Rochester decided to move forward with the repair of their existing boiler. Um, I passed that information along to your guys' facilities. Director consultant, um, I don't know where it's gone since then, but I did um, get them in contact with a couple of mechanical contractors that can perform that work. Um, so at this point, what I wanted to review with you guys today is some of the preliminary numbers. And these are really magnitude of cost before we go into them too much. So what we like to do is um, I want to present some numbers to you guys that incorporates items that are capital improvements outside of just energy saving measures. And these numbers, like I said, they're a magnitude of cost. So when you guys see like a flooring replacement, um, it might be a round number, say $100,000. And it, it's not going to have any real detail to it. What that is saying is that um, does Rochester Stockbridge want to move forward with investigating more flooring under this um, performance contract, or is that something that they feel um, is not necessary at this time, or they can take on their own? So I want to kind of just present some of these real magnitude of costs. And then what ends up happening is say, if you guys do select flooring as something that you guys do want to move forward with, say, you know, Stockbridge has some nine by nine floor tile, red floor tile in its classroom that I would suspect is probably positive for asbestos. So I do have a price in there to replace all of that floor tile with new VCT tile. Uh, that being said, um, VCT is kind of your cheapest option for the initial install. Um, you can also look at doing MCT, which doesn't have, you know, the waxing requirements um, that VCT does. Um, you could also look at doing carpet tile or flow tech. So there's other flooring options. Each one has a different price point. But really at this point, um, it's not about details. It's not about um, getting into square foot costs and really dialing in on it. It's more of here's kind of the magnitude of costs. Is this something um, that you guys want us to move forward with? The numbers might you know, go up 15%, they might go down 15% once we further um, investigate it more. But these are kind of real round budget numbers that we utilize a lot um, at school districts throughout Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, next slide. So as I mentioned, um, we, are, we are finishing up the energy audit stage. So we've had engineers go through, architects, vendors, um, and then at this point, we've broken down some performance saving measures, including boilers, controls, insulation, lights, um, and then capital improvements, flooring, ceiling tiles, painting, um, roofing systems, security systems, and fire alarm. We do have a lot of experience working with all of these, these different systems. Um, I would say, generally speaking, we focus on you know, lighting systems, boiler upgrades, control systems. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of times when we're getting into those, um, you know, it makes a lot of sense to do the ceiling tiles, the floors, and the painting. Other capital improvements that can be done at the same time while we're already in the school, we have um, presence on sites, um, oversight. It's a good time to get some of those other capital improvements done at the same time. So those are kind of some of the, those are kind of some of the steps I kind of wanted to, I want to review some of these initial magnitude of cost. Um, I'm not looking for any dis decisions from you guys today, but I'm really, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of money to absorb. What I'm really looking for is for you guys to think about it um, and then give us a direction in the next month or two of where do you guys really want us to explore? What do you guys want us to dig into, um, provide more options on? And then we take it to the next level with the next steps, which is that's where we really start quantifying 
what flooring um, specifically is getting replaced, how much square footage, what's the difference in cost between MCT, VCT, carpet, what's your life expectancy on those. So we do the life expectancy cost analysis for different capital improvements. Um, and then really at that point, um, we get harder numbers. So we get firmer numbers as the scope and the project develops. Um, like I said, at this point, this is the real early stages, which is the magnitude of cost. Um, next slide. I want to jump right into it. Um, I would provide a lot of a lot of pictures for you guys. Um, I do have a lot of pictures. Um, I'm hoping that you guys are pretty familiar with your guys existing buildings. Um, so starting at Rochester Elementary School, one thing that we've been discussing a lot is your guys um, steam heating system. Um, so the first item remove the existing underground fuel oil tanks. Um, so that's just something you guys have 20 plus year old oil tank over there. Um, typically, we are not going back. Well, no, we, are, we never really go back with oil fired boilers for a lot of different reasons. Um, we either go with usually an LP condensing boiler or a wood chip boiler, which you see on ECM measures four and five. Um, and the reason why we do that is just because they're more efficient and there's less greenhouse gas emissions from both of those. So, um, and then especially with the wood chip, um, there's good savings with those as well. Um, so the first items that you see through there are really based on your guys' steam heating system. Um, ECM measures one through seven. Um, at the same time, you'll see in there, there's a rebate, which is aligned to the ECM number four, which was installing a new wood chip boiler. That's something that Lyle Smith, myself and Jamie um, has worked on with the state of Vermont. There's a grant program that's, doing, that's um, being put on through the Agency of Education for heating system updates. Um, we filled out initial grant applications for Rochester as well as Bethel, South Royalton, and I think maybe one other school within the White River Valley Supervisory Union. Um, Rochester was selected as um, a school that would qualify for the maximum $250,000 grant. Um, that grant does require a 10% um, contribution with the Rochester Elementary School. So that's a rebate that we are currently working on, or it's a grant, we, I throw it in there as a rebate, because um, that's a direct cost reduction that would go against one of these projects if you guys decide to move forward. Um, <clears throat> Jamie and Lyle and I will be finishing up that grant application here in the next week. It is a little bit more cumbersome than I had originally expected, but we are, we are working through it. And I do expect, based on discussions with um, Christopher Heine, who's running the program on the AOE, um, that this this money is going to be real, um, and it's something that you know should be in your guys' school district this year and ready for implementation spring summer of 2023. Um, moving down the list, um, some other items that we talked about. You guys have some classroom ventilation units on the roof, which currently do provide a lot of good ventilation to your rooms. They are 20 plus years old. Um, they're at the end of their useful life. So that's something that certainly can be looked at being replaced and updated at, um, upgraded at the same time. Um, you know, if you look at doing ECM measures one through nine, um, at that point, actually one through nine combined with um, ECM number 12, you guys would be in a really good spot from an HVAC ventilation standpoint where really you guys would have a good system and shouldn't need really any updates for the next 20 plus years. Um, that's what the goals would be when you when we would do the HVAC update. Um, there's an LED lighting upgrade. Um, I wish the payback was a little bit better on that. Unfortunately, the smaller schools, just with the magnitude of cost of uh, mobilization on site, typically don't have as good payback. Um, but LED lighting is certainly something that the school is um, ready for. It does have older fixtures, and I think would be a big benefit to the, to the school district. Um, asbestos abatement. So that's something that certainly does need to be investigated a little bit more. This does not remove all the asbestos in the school. This is really focused on the pipe insulation that's specific to the steam conversion. So in a lot of the um, insulation on the old steam system, the joints, which is your elbows, um, has, has a muddy compound, which I would be very surprised if it's not asbestos. I have not had it tested. Um, one thing that would happen is if you guys decided to move forward with this work and you guys do want to, you know, have EEI explore some more of these measures, um, we would have a third party come in and do an asbestos te test or I'd work with ATC or your guys' um, abatement contractor who's done your plans in the past and we would fully develop that. 
to, to understand where all the asbestos is and what it would take to abate it. Um, install the DDC control system. Um, this is something that I think is really important for your guys' school district, both at Rochester and at Stockbridge. This would provide web-based controls and allow um, somebody like a Lyle or some maintenance or district-wide facilities director to go in on a laptop and really zero in on what exactly is happening in each one of your classrooms. So this would provide individual control, heating control to each one of your classrooms. Each one of the radiators in there would have um, a thermostat associated with it. Um, we would add what's called demand control ventilation to your guys' thermostat. So you guys would actually be monitoring the CO2 in the space. We would make modifications to the air inside of the space based on CO2. So at this point, you're really dialing in um, the controls and you're really only providing ventilation to spaces when it's needed. And then um, another nice aspect of it is you guys could do night setbacks. Um, right now, you guys, you guys utilize what's called a pneumatic control system, which has an air compressor in your boiler room. And then um, it goes and feeds a bunch of standalone thermostats that are on the walls. Um, it's, you guys do have quite a few zones. It seems like each room does have its own control of the heat. The problem is, is that they're all, you know, just a real basic dial thermostat, which doesn't allow for any night setbacks, um, which actually typically does. I think I've under, usually on my savings over here, they, they tend to be undervalued, um, especially at this stage of it. As we dial it more in the engineering, um, I can get the savings, fine tune them a little bit more, but I do expect those savings to increase. I kind of start low with expectations and then I hope to over deliver on our next meeting once we have more information. <clears throat> roof replacement, same thing. You guys have a roof that um, is, you know, at the end of its useful life, it does need replacement. Um, a lot of times what we do is, you know, when we look at doing roof replacements, um, you know, it makes a lot of sense to replace those classroom ventilation units um, at the same time. And then really at that point, your roof is, you got new equipment on the roof, your penetrations are complete. Um, you know, when we look at doing roof replacements, it's a great time to add solar onto your roof. I know you guys are kind of already locked into a, I believe you guys are, might already be part of a solar agreement. Um, that being said, uh, if we do replace the roof, it's a good opportunity to do a structural analysis and add some solar panels to help offset your, your specific electric bills at Rochester. Um, gymna gymnasium windows. Um, these are windows that are up above on the windows. For the most part, they've been boarded up painted on. Um, so this would allow some natural sunlight back into the into the gym. I'm just throwing these out there. It doesn't mean we have to move forward. There's other options. If you guys do move forward with a roof, we could look at doing either solar tubes to allow natural light through solar tube lights, or like we said, we could replace these windows. Um, they are bad. They, they definitely need painting. They're boarded up. So um, classroom windows. So these are the classrooms in the original 1970s. Uh, 1970s building. Um, so this is a, these are really just based on a square foot window to go with a nice aluminum clad, double pane, high efficient window. Um, ceiling tile replacement, same thing, older ceiling tile, it's a good opportunity to replace ceilings. Um, because you guys already have a, an existing ventilation system that meets code, um, there's really not a 100% requirement to do ceiling tiles. A lot of times we do more ceiling tiles when we get into updating ductwork, when we have to tear down ceilings to get into it. Um, exterior door replacement, same thing. The 70s edition has, you know, a doors, that are doors that you can see daylight through um, at the end of their life. And then interior door replacement as well, um, mainly focused on the 1970s edition um, is where you see the most need. The 1990s actually seems to be in great shape. Um, bathroom renovations to the both the boys and girls bathroom. Um, I should have provided a picture of this, but um, you guys do have two main bathrooms that are just off from the principal's office in the main corridor. Um, they are old. They look like they're pretty original. So there's good opportunity to, um, they, they should, or they need replacement. Um, and then just in general, paving the bus drop off and turn around. Um, you know, these might be wish list items. I just, something that I noticed when I picked it up, it creates a lot of dirt um, that gets tracked in through the building. Um, so looking at doing a bus drop off and turn around, paving that and cleaning that up. Flooring upgrade, same thing, older flooring, and then um, interior painting just to spruce it up. So what this kind of gives you is a full, this would be a full update to the building and really, you know, touch all the finishes, 
Um, you guys have pretty good electrical entrance and electrical service coming into the building, which is why that wasn't included. The fire alarm's in good shape, which that which is why that wasn't included. Um, some additional things that we could look at is a security system. It wasn't specifically brought up, um, but that's something that is something that we have a lot of experience with, and we do those in a lot of schools. So at a rough magnitude of cost on this project, you're looking about just shy of $3.8 million, um, which we feel at that point would give you guys a great HVAC system, um, something you don't have to worry about for 20 years, and then really upgrade the interior of the building um, to meet current code. Um, that includes creating um, fire smoke barriers through the corridors for egress, um, upgrading all the, the painting and just sprucing up the building and providing a, a, an, an uplift through the whole building. Um, down below the total cost amount, um, you'll see a 15 year lease option, which is based at a four and a half percent interest rate, which would be um, a lease payment of 353,000 a year. Um, if you reduced your energy savings from that, it'd be a total um, impact to the district of 328,500 per year. And this, these are just round numbers that I want to show you so you guys can get a feel for, you know, what the district has an appetite for trying to bite off in the investment in their schools and, um, you know, where this is leading. So th this is Rob Tester Elementary School. If we could scoot over to um, next slide, which is Stockbridge, unless I want unless people want to take questions now or. Keep going. Keep going. All right, so let me let me jump into Stockbridge, another you know small school in the terms of you know just in comparison to what we see around the state. This is certainly one of the smaller one, wood frame construction. Um, so one of the you guys have two main ventilation units that are both up above your your kitchen area. One of them is um, an air handling unit that goes ductwork kind of serpentines through the, the the gym and actually picks up all the classrooms. Um, up above the ceiling. So this is a unit 30 plus years old, at least um, definitely past its useful life works off a time clock. Didn't seem to be running when I was there while school was in session. This is certainly something that's added past its useful life. And, you know, because it is your pretty much your dedicated ventilation unit to all of your classrooms, this is something that should be replaced sooner rather than later. Um, Gym air handling unit slash makeup air unit. This is a unit that um, I have to do a little bit more investigating on. It's a Resner unit that sits right next to the air handling unit. This is 100% outside air. Um, it is um, should be interlocked with the kitchen hood so that when the kitchen hood comes on, this thing makes up the, the air difference of what's being sucked out of the kitchen. Um, it does not seem to be operating that way. Um, it seems to be providing heat to the gym, which is certainly not what you're supposed to be doing with a makeup air unit. Um, so that's something that we want to look at of how do we separate the gym unit, create a dedicated unit for the, um, for the kitchen and really separate those systems. So that they, um, operate per code. Same thing, led lighting upgrade, um, smaller school. So it doesn't have as great of a payback. Um, that being said, the new led lighting that we install today is, you know, significantly better than the lights that you guys are utilizing. Um, they all come with auto dimming. So when and sensors, motion sensors. So when classroom, when sun comes through the classroom windows, these lights will auto dim to maintain a foot candle at the actual desk. Um, they also come with um, uh, dimming capabilities. So a lot of times when we set these lights, they're only running at about 45% capacity to meet the foot candle requirements through the state of Vermont. Um, agency of education. So there's an option, you know, there's a light switch that will be near the wall that if you press up, it will light that room up like a science lab. So if you guys have something going on where you really need that extra light um, for kids to be focusing on small objects where they might be doing stuff with that extra light as component, these lights really do give that ability to get a lot of light. And at the same time, if, you know, if a teacher is doing a presentation, they want just a little light, um, you know, there's that dimming capability to just have it just barely lit. Um, and then the nice things on it is has motion sensors and grouping options so that when somebody walks into the room, you know, the, the lights light up to an area that's expected. Um, but when people leave after five minutes, the lights turn off or they dim to say 10%. And when people come back in, they turn back on. Um, so it's a really nice cost saving measures. Same thing. Um, I think this 
Um, the the rebates on these I have not built into the cost yet, and I think we're going to see a lot better efficiency Vermont rebates. So I expect to see these payback periods on the lighting to come down significantly. <clears throat> GDC control system, a lot of what I just said at Rochester. Um, so adding controls to your guys' two new, um, your two air handling units, and then your main boiler system. You guys have, you know, a nice new um, Udaris boiler down there. Each zone has its own pump. Um, really no need to replace that. Um, you know, I guess my only thought would be is that updating it from oil to LP might be nice. <clears throat> but certainly not necessary being that the school just made a large investment in that boiler system. Um, but this DDC control system would provide controls to those boilers. So each one of the classrooms would have its own system similar to, to Rochester with demand control ventilation, mod modulating the airflow inside of the space. And then, um, you know, having a thermostat with individual controls and night setbacks for the classrooms. Um, getting into more capital projects at Stockbridge, um, existing wood facade that's around the gymnasium is, seems to be in rough shape. Um, so this is a budget number to replace that wood facade with a different material. I think, you know, this original budget is a little bit high. Um, but once again, it, it all depends on what, what material you guys ultimately go with. Um, you know, just a couple of options down, I have the paint wood siding. So, you know, at a minimum, the wood seems to be it's a stained wood. It does need to get restained. Um, it's it's grain. It's fading. Um, it needs to be updated before it damages the wood more than it already has. Um, abate asbestos floor tile with new VCT flooring. So those that's that nine by nine classroom red floor tile that I was talking about, which seems to be in most of the classrooms. Um, bathroom renovations, same thing. Older bathrooms have opportunity to renovate. Um, Repave parking lots and turnarounds, um, fire alarm upgrade, bringing the fire alarm up to current code, classroom window replacement, same thing, updating the windows, ceiling upgrade. So when we go through and do the ventilation and we go and replace those units and add coils to the individual heating to each one of those classrooms, it's a good opportunity to upgrade the ceiling tiles, um, which seem to be probably original to the builder. Um, roofing replacement, same thing. You guys have a, a flat rubber black roof on the main portion of your guys' building. Um, and then there's the pitched roof within the gym, which are, which I haven't done a full analysis on those yet, but they seem to have somewhere in that probably two to five year life expectancy left in them. Um, and then the last one, just being interior painting of classrooms and just doing a general um, fix up of the space. Um, and then the same thing, the interior painting would address um, egress, smoke walls, fire barriers in between the corridors and the classrooms. Um, total budget at Stockbridge, we're looking at, you know, just shy of 1.9 million. Um, and same thing with a 15 year lease based on uh, a four and a half percent interest rate. And with the built in energy savings, you'd be looking at, you know, yearly payments of around 171,000 a year. Um, like I said, these are, these are magnitude of costs. And then what I would be looking for is, you know, the next opportunity for me to get in front of you to sit down, really understand, you know, once you guys dive into these things, um, what you want us to explore more. And then what we do with those, um, with the ECM measures that you guys ultimately select and want to move forward with, um, we'll take those, we'll provide, you know, engineer drawings, architectural drawings, um, we create what's called a preliminary investment grade audit. So it creates a report. Each school might be 20 to 25 pages. It includes lots of pictures, um, lots of floor plans, lots of square footage. And then we really dial into each one of these capital improvements and energy saving measures. Um, we start getting specific into products. Um, we start talking more about, you know, timelines and, and lead times on different equipment. Um, so that, that would be the next stage of the process. Um, I think both of these schools have, they do need some love, you know, for the most part. They, I know there's a lot of support in the community for them um, and they provide a great function for the people around them. And I think that it's a good opportunity to put investments into these schools to make sure that they're here for the next 15 to 20 years. Okay. So I'm happy to take any questions. Good, um, just a reminder, please. Uh, let me ask if you have questions so we can keep that in control a little bit. 
Um, is it possible we can get this uh, printout? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've already shared it with oh. Jamie, so um, I can provide it to everyone as yeah, well. We need, I have it on my computer. Or something. Yeah, we need to take a look at this. Um, do, I mean, I feel like I want to study this, and this is... Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I just had one question. Yeah, um, sure, go ahead, Amy. And it just relates to the... Um, I like the idea, but what was the reason for the change in the boiler from um, LP was what last time we had talked about was kind of the, the direction you were really looking at going, and now you've, you've um, changed over to the wood chips, and I just, uh, I'm encouraged by it, and I love that you've looked into it, I'm just kind of wondering what yeah, what the change is, what, what the benefit is. Yeah, no, I think I showed both of them on that last Rock um, Rochester project, so if you go back um, to that other one, um, the one right below wood chip is the LP gas back, uh, backup. Yeah. So ultimately, um, what typically ends up happening is even when you install a wood chip boiler, um, like at Sharon Elementary School, you still have a backup LP boiler. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a couple different options. Um, the payback on the wood chip boiler is typically the best. Um, something that I was talking about, Lyle, with the wood chip is it just does, it does have a little bit more maintenance required to it. But it does sound like as a district, you guys are probably going to have the, the personnel on site to be able to address this in the future. Um, so I, I probably will explore both options, but ultimately it's going to come up to, do you guys want one wood chip, most likely a pellet boiler, along with a single LP backup? Or if we go just LP, usually what we do is we do two boilers that are both around 80% of total capacity. So that if you guys ever have an issue with one of the boilers, that other boiler can maintain temperature in that space over that period of time. Um, so that's just called like a lead lag redundancy on the boiler systems. And the reason why you don't size it for 100% is, you know, because boiler capacities are sized for that, you know, worst day of the year, um, you know, that 99 year um, occurrence where you have multiple days of negative 30 degree weather. Um, so the, it's just over designed typically when you do redundant 100% capacity boilers. Well, we have to. So I, I, oh, what's oh, this, we do have to remember this is an emergency site, too, in terms of heating and backup. Just what we can keep in mind. Um, good. Any other questions? Does that answer your question, Amy? It does, and I definitely want to take this and ingest it, and yeah. and then maybe meet again to talk about it again. Is there and I, I'm open to all suggestions. You know, what I did is I met with, I used Black River's report that they did on Rochester. I met with the principal. I met with Lyle. I met with Jamie. Uh -huh. I tried to get a feeling for what the, the, the schools had an appetite for. Who I didn't meet with was obviously the school board specifically. So if there's stuff that you guys want to see added to this um, and explored more, um, I'm more than happy to add additional items to this list and have it be part of our um, preliminary investment grade audit. Um, so if anybody wants to follow up in the next week with additional items that you'd like to see added with prices and more information, we can certainly do so. Um, yeah, because I feel like, I mean, this is, you know, we, we're already at eight, 10 past eight. I don't think this is the time for a lengthy discussion about this, but I think we need to find and maybe it's even a special meeting to, to look over these priorities and really do some brainstorming of what our priorities are for both buildings. I, I agree. I think the special meeting was quite good last time. We could just focus on that for yep. an hour and a half. Yep. And, and um, so, yeah. No, I, that, I, I do agree. The special meetings are, are usually great. And I don't know, I know you guys are a smaller school board. Some school boards have, you know, specific facility task force committees that really kind of tackle this. Um, you know, if that's yeah, something that typically works out. Yeah. That's how we would warn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We would do that. Um, All right. I think that's a great idea. Um, yeah. I, I, I would throw, if I may, I would throw one at you right now. I would like to see what solar yeah. would add to both the campuses. Yeah, absolutely. What's the, I, I, what's the appropriate sizing and what would be the appropriate... Um, um, Nace and Wade's been after us for years to be doing this. And if we're talking about a new roof, it is the time to put something like yeah. that on. Um, so uh, uh, just get those numbers so that we could look at that. Nobody Would you, there. just curious, um, I know Stockbridge has a nice pitched roof on the on the gym. Would you guys be, is it mainly um, building mounted arrays that you'd be more interested with? Or do you think a ground? Whatever, I don't know how probably, much land you guys have at Rochester. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 
building. We're already looking at something with stoppage too, so we'll talk. Oh, you are. That. Okay, good, good, good. It's all right. Okay, good, good, good. Well, then that's I will, I will, I will add that to both of them. I'll, I'll yeah, provide okay. some more detail. Um, we're actually just starting um, a solar array um, at Hannaford Career Center in Middlebury, Vermont. Uh -huh. um, so one of the big things that you know are involved in that is doing a structural analysis on the building and just making sure that um, that there's a pound per square foot that the building can maintain for a solar panel. And then we have to make an adjustment to the layout, solar panel adjustment, based on what the, the capacity of the roofing is. I mean, is we, in that in that building. Have so those would be kind of the next steps. Plenty of space here if we want to put it on the ground. The nice thing about the ground is you can clear it easier. Um, believe me, I have solar panels on my roof. Anyway, we'll talk about that another time. Mm -hmm. Very good. Eric, I think we're done for tonight. Thank Great. You, thank you so much. Yeah, please, if we can get this, and we'll, uh, we will schedule that meeting. And Great. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Excellent. High school update, including high school environmental assessment, possible action. Okay, we had a very good meeting with Sarah. Remember her last name? No. Reve. Reve. Darn it. That's classroom teacher. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry. That's anyway, I'm so bad at names. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, right? Right, so oh, right. I was Sorry, give us Sarah for listening. She was really good. Uh, she was very clear. And um, the first thing I wanted to say is that as far as environmental studies, is this happens all the time for all kinds of businesses, from mom and pop stores to you know mines like Stafford, you know, was in Stafford. So it's not something new, it's not something unknown, it happens a lot. Um, uh, and what we're going to do, um, sorry, my brain just shut down a little bit there. Um, uh, but she was very clear about what this process is, these different uh, tiers of investigation. The first one being basically sort of a desktop review of what exists um, and where we think areas of interest would be. And then the second part of that is to actually dig holes tear things apart, look at what the, what's actually in there, and come up with, there's a lot of grant funding for that investigation work, and there's also a lot of grant funding for, um, for taking it out and, and repairing it. Um, so this is a process that we would need to start uh, soon, because obviously, I have to say, I just gotta say this, I cannot believe that our lawyer did not mention this to us, talking about property transfers. Yeah, me too. A year and a half ago. So I just put that on the record that that's, uh, um, you know, we're, we're not super behind. Um, let me just, so that what we're going to ask, just to get to the meat and potatoes, we're asking for the approval for, the, for this. So brownfields is the term of this kind of a study. And we're asking um, for a approval for this to go forward. Uh, and I, I hope we'll give it to the school um, or to the town. It's in your packet. Yeah, it's in the packet. Yeah, a while ago. So they consider all sites brownfields until they get there and investigate it? Or is there certain aspects that have already created? No, it's pretty much everything has to. They have to make sure that there isn't anything. It's, okay. it's way in the assumption. Anything built before a certain time, okay. there that, is stuff there. That, that's what I, because it just and, is scary, that brownfield oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. No, they've no, already no. identified it, but it is actually, <coughs> like you said, it happens all the time in any place I mean, you have of this age. Yeah. We, have a, tank, be, we no. have a tank in the ground. Yeah. Bingo, right there. Just yeah. that one alone. Yeah. PCBs is another one. It's right there. We know it exists. It's already there. So once they start that procedure, there's a number of other things they're going to look for. Okay. That's the desktop. They're going to look into some history of the building, history of the site before this building existed even, um, um, to see what exists there. It sounds, you know, when you first hear it, it sounds, ah, and then you, you start to, this, this woman did a really good job of making it sound like this is not, you know, this is not overwhelming. This is done all the time. And then we can it's make this abnormal. happen. Yeah, it's not abnormal at all. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just behind. It's just going to add some time. Robert, you wanted to add no, something? I was just going to point out that, that what's done in phase two is dictated by the analysis done on phase one. one. So yes. it could be they may not need to do that much yes. testing. Correct. And there is already a fair amount of 
history of, you know, like asbestos analysis and such that already exists. So, you know, they don't necessarily have to do a lot. So, do we need I'm anything? Assuming, I'd like to make a motion that we allow yes. um, this study to go forward. I think that we we provide the um, this uh, this form. Uh, there we go. Site name and address. Let's see the owner participation. Uh, did I make a motion that we agree to the the owner participation and site access form? Yeah. And then filling it out and provide that to the town of Rochester. Well, actually, I said it right to right to her. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's waiting on it. She wants to get jumping on. I think this is. Yeah. The next step I second that. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? I know. Make sure everybody understands what we're up to here. Good. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Justine. Are you there? She's muted. Yep. Yeah. Can you just give us an aye, Justine, or an A? For this Brownfields program. Hi. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, got you. Mike's not working. Good. Nice good. Okay, that is a. Thank you. That's an approval. Great. Thank Excellent. you. Let's keep going. Thank you. Our submission, vision, document, and goals. Possible action. So, not a lot of change to this. We basically met today to sort of finalize. Oh, build it a nice job of finding um, I, I have to say um, here's here's what I'd like to say about this I think this is a really good beginning and I, I would recommend that we approve it um, accept it as the board um, that said already just looking at that mission statement that I sent out about the Shady Hill School I'm now seeing some other things that I want to I really want to bring up and talk about again as far as our vision and our understanding. Um, but for now, we're asking to... Uh, Just to clarify, this yes. is board vision and mission. Correct. This is not school mission and vision. This is the boards. Yes. Well, the board really, their goal, their some of their focus work is to create the mission and vision of the school. Right. But we're, this specific statement yes. here is is what the board is going to use to mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. school's vision. Well, what the administration is going to use. They're going to read, because it's administration's job to, to run the school. Right. Our job is to guide our administration. That is true, but it is, it is the board's job to create the school mission. Right. And vision. And vision. Vision. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just want to make sure I'm clarifying that this is, this is for our, the board. And well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I think I agree with school. that. That we're changing yeah, yeah. the, the, the vision, mission and vision of our school. Yes. Okay. Rigorous creative education, working with all resources we have. As far as I'm concerned, that's. Yeah, that's the school. That's, to that's, clarify. that's the school vision, mm -hmm. and I was really happy to see it used in our annual meeting presentation because it was a good test that it already is something that the administration says, oh, I can work with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's the goal, is that we're doing this so that they know what we want in our school. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things about the goals we come up with. But I, as I say, um, our recommendation from the committee is that we accept this for, for now as a template, and I, as we mentioned today, one of the great things is when we do have our next retreat, we had nothing for goals. We had nothing sort of for vision. We were starting from a blank slate, and now we have something, and we can change it. We can update it. We can approve it. Do we want to make a motion? Are we ready? I make a motion to um, accept this uh, updated uh, uh, vision, mission statements, and goals document. I second. second. I second. Further discussion? Uh, I would point out that this is, is supposed to be a document that continuously is updated. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's very much the spirit in which we're presenting it. Further discussion? 
There being none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Excellent. Ah. She got it. We can hear you. And we'll get this um, clearly articulated on the our website now, too. Yep. Great. Great. Uh, modify, right, 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 yeah. Modified Robert Rules of Order. Modified. Modified. Guys, I brought my, my you guys mother. talked about uh, formally adopting that as, as your working procedure. Yes. Um, last so month, I missed, so I, did, totally I didn't want to leave it off, so I yep. caught it in my notes. Good, thank you. Good work. Um, so how do we identify the specific we version of Robert's rules? We had a sheet for it last time that sort of, it basically relaxes some of the restrictions that um, involve town meeting standard Robert's rules where things have to be moved, seconded, um, only the, uh, I can't vote in regular Robert's, Robert's rules order, but this is a small Robert's rule, so it allows us a more informal attitude, which is pretty much how we've been uh, running anyway. So it would be just a matter of codifying that and, and just so we make it, it also makes they set some time limits, things like that, for people to speak. It's very good to have that in writing if we should ever, God forbid, or trees forbid, um, ever have to be in a contentious setting like we were with the school closing. So is there another little book or a handout that actually has there's a the sheet modified? Of, there's, there's, there's a sheet of paper that we, okay. that we actually, I've seen. I've set it out before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I make we a motion just, that our board adopts the modified Robert Rules of Order. Do we have that as uh, Amy Wilt? Second. I've been saying names. Seconded by Robert Mayer. Any further discussion? There being none, all signify it by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. And possible tax anticipation note. And I actually know what that is now a little bit. No, our set board procedures and protocols with the company started. Oh, oh, no, sorry. did we jump, skip it? Jump, no, no, no. That's okay. He set the standard. He was jumping all over the place in that billing report. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes. Board procedures, protocols, and accompanying survey. How many people answered their survey? I filled mine up. <laughs> all right, pass it down. Uh -huh. that was that was like, did I put my name on it? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's um, <laughs> and, and when I compile I things. you're doing a great job. If there's any. Um, <laughs> It's not private, but yeah, okay. uh, but I, I don't think I don't need the to idea is that oh, yeah. uh, what the results are <laughs> or opinions are not who has them, and then we'll share that as a learning yeah, experience. This is a year together, and we set some targets on how we wanted to behave <coughs> and uh, <coughs> what was important. And so <coughs> I think it's it's not unique to us, but um, mm -hmm. organizations. Sound organizations like to do a self-assessment. This is one way that the board can take a self-assessment. I suggest uh, for you, Mr. Chairman, that uh, it be added to our retreat agenda, and we can talk about the results. What we learned. We need to change any of our protocols or operating or our our educational principles, and uh, and then kind of agree to move forward with that commitment. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And if those who haven't done uh, it, you can give it to me and. In writing or an attachment to an email or send it to me, whatever is easier. There's no immediate rush, but I do, depending on when the retreat is, it's, it, I think it's going to be very helpful to us. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for taking Thank you for taking that and doing that. I suppose we should put on our next, we need a retreat date. We can't do it tonight, but. Um, with the retreat? Yeah. Is it already scheduled? No, we're going to do it tonight. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it tonight. Uh, we can do it via email. I think the biggest question for the board is August versus September. I think September August is, is... Yeah. A little brutal. We did in September last year. That's a, that's the only reason why I brought it up. I had a hard time pulling you all together in August. Yeah, 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 yeah September probably is. Got kids, we're on vacation. Yeah. Let's put it on the August agenda. To set it for set September. the date. Okay, yeah. that sounds, sounds good. good. That okay. sounds good. Great. I just hope we had a hard. We tried last year to get yeah. in August, and we weren't yep. able to. Yep. Speaking of cats. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of the cats. Okay.
Justine. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Justine, you have a kitten on your shoulder. Uh. <laughs> yep. I saw, I, saw the, I saw the kid earlier. <laughs> right. The kid it's trying to keep the kid then. out of the kitten room. Sounds yeah, this good. is where the kitten is banished, right, for the moment, because the other animals are kind of scary still. Gotcha. Very good. <laughs> Pretty cute. Oh okay, 9-6. Look at this. Boy, we made up some time here. Not that that's the goal. Uh, annual tax anticipation... Uh, try yep. that again. Annual tax anticipation note. 9-6. We have it here. Do we have any questions about our annual... Community National Bank. This is, just a quick this is a different bank than last year, is that correct, Tara? Nope, same bank. Okay. How are we doing? I make a motion that we accept the yeah. tax anticipation <laughs> note as presented by Tara for, do I need to state the amount or anything? Yes, I need you to, I emailed you the motion, Amy, but I can tell it to you. Um, I need you to actually say the amount. Oh, I got it right here. Beautiful. Okay, I move to accept the 2022-2023 tax anticipation note in the amount of $1,111,823 with Community National Bank. Second. Robert. Further discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? I realize I've been forgotten to say that. But, uh, so I will need wet signatures from the board this year because the COVID allowance for electronic signatures is gone. So once I get the loan documents from the bank, I can do what we did for the annual warnings. If that's easier, I can bring it to the schools. You can stop in, sign, and then get it. Let me know when it's done. And ideally, we want it signed by the end of June so that uh, the funds are available for Kristen on July 1st if she needs them. Great. Okay. Very good. So is it going Thank to be you. at the SU office? Thank you very much, Tara. Thank you. SU office, Tara? No, she's going to get No, her. she sends it to the schools. I will bring them to the schools. I'll start in Rochester, and then Rochester board members, if they can stop in at the school and sign, and then when Rochester signs, if Lindy can take it to Stockbridge like we did with the warning, and the Stockbridge members can stop in and sign. Excellent. Thank you so much. We've taken all of our action for Section 10. So we have new hires resignation, fingers crossed. We do have oh. one resignation. Uh, our PE teacher, oh, we yeah. haven't done that in May. Oh. Ms. Alejandra <coughs> is resigning. That's a loss. Mm. Holy smoke. Uh, can we say expected and unexpected? Can we say anything about that or not? Or we just, just we have, we have a, we've had a couple resignations due to licensure issues. Ah. People have had their time and they haven't been able to make it happen. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will entertain a motion to accept the resignation of our PE teacher. Alejandra Bangerter. Uh, Alejandra Bangerter. Regret. Um, with regret and appreciation. Absolutely. Because uh, she was yeah. wonderful. Can somebody make that motion, please? So moved. Okay. Uh, moved by Robert, seconded by D uh, Bill. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And just to clarify, I mean, I know it, it's been our district's um, policy to, they're actually not resignations, right? Like, they're finishing their year out. Uh -huh. They're choosing not to return next mm -hmm. year, but they're, it's not actually a resignation. Right. And I know that the districts have done their business this way. I'm, I'm, I think moving forward will continue to tell you that they're not returning but they didn't actually resign right the yeah, contract yeah, yeah, yeah. ended june 30th well let's use the right terminology yeah, uh, yeah. So, i think so we'll learn that yeah, yeah. so it, i've i've been because resignation it. sounds abrupt well resignation well, is in the moment yeah. right, right? right. Yeah. or within two weeks this person is finishing out yeah. 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 this person's finishing out their yeah. tenure thank you right. yeah. okay um well it does make a big difference yeah yeah you have some difference. yeah Opportunities for some very creative hiring and some footsteps to fill. Absolutely. We have yeah. lots of interviews 
Good. Great. Oh, good. Thursday and so, Friday. could you yeah. like the candidate poll you were getting so far? So yeah. far, yeah. Great. Good. We'll see what actually happens when we meet. Yeah. First one time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we understand. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's oh, that's too bad. She she was the mastermind of field day, and it really was like so creative, from tic tac toe to sponge races to tug of war to just it, it was there was a lot of educating going on while they were running around having fun and I just it, love it. Well and I think it the fact want. that they're competing amongst themselves, not against each other, is yeah. a huge mindset shift, which has been much appreciated because it's uh, pretty rare that PE class is an issue and I'm not sure a lot of my um, fellow administrators can say that. Great. It's pretty low discipline. Which is because which, they're engaged because she's and Is she's being creative system? and they're using their minds, that's, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's, well, it sets a clear standard for what we're trying to. Mm -hmm. Or a principal knows something about it, too. Yeah, well, Just there you go. Bit. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's true. Job. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, job. that's great. But he's not here day to day. day. Yeah. See, this is why I'm never going to run for the Senate, because I didn't teach PE ever. That's right. You know. I, I'm just a Good. PE educator's daughter. Yeah. I, I, ah, I lived it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I've had my fingers crossed. Do we have any public comment at this time? Um, Nancy, I believe you're still our sole public. We appreciate very much you staying on with us. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any comments at the end of all this? Oops, I guess we can't hear her for some reason. Sorry, she's... It's kind of frozen. Yeah, it's sort of frozen, unfortunately. Nancy, I'm sorry, you're frozen for some reason. So, <laughs> oh, thumb up. Okay, we the international signal, international Zoom signal for everything's good. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, future agenda items. Um, Planning the board retreat. Planning the board retreat. Uh, uh, EI is going to be on. Still, um, I think a high school update is going to be on as well. Yep. You may be getting potentially your S back. We'll see if they um, lift the embargo um, on those test results. I expect them to lift it quicker this year um, because COVID. They, last year, a lot of schools were virtual, so they kept an embargo longer. Yeah, um, we, we we moved on anyways, but um, but uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to give you an update then. Um, we didn't ask for permission, we begged for forgiveness. And of course, planning on the board retreat. I'd like to take some time to actually plan that agenda then, yeah. possibly, if yeah. we could, and put a little thought into that. Oh, yeah. Um, because I think we'll have some time. I think we keep it focused on maybe those areas. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, I don't know. I gotta put this in the thought first. Yeah. There's an arts curriculum sort of vision that I want to present that I really want to uh, think about a little bit more. So let's wait. If I get it done, because I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah, no, just email. Okay. So we're, are we meeting next month or we have. Uh, July's July off. July's, July's, July's off recess. Point. It says Sorry. to be determined just because we need to sort out. What is going to be that night of the week that we might meet with Jihad? My hope is to kick those off in August because we tend to have lighter agendas in August. I think it's a good place to try yeah. to see how it goes. Um, so part of, one of your action items may actually be right then that you amend that night your um, monthly location. If you just take action that evening. If it's not, the we first, could have a special. If it's not in the first week. I'll have to postpone your regular scheduled meeting. I may, I may, well, I just, I may not be, I won't be there for the second and third week. In August. August. Yeah. I mean, well. I think the first week's fine, because that's when Jihad goes as well. I think we just got to settle on what night of the week. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, good. We will talk, tackle that then. Um, barring anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all very much, and good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.